welcome to today's webinar. My name is Skylar Cunningham of Lean Frontiers, and I will serve as your host today. You can also see on the screen our presenter, Suzanne Van Eggman. Just a few points of logistics before we get started. Today's short presentation is being recorded, so look for an email shortly after this recording with a link to view the session on demand. Please share it with those in your organization. Due to the short nature of this webinar, we will not be fielding questions. If you do have questions, our presenter will share her email address and you can email the presenter directly. If you would like a copy of today's PowerPoint, you can find it attached to today's webinar. The 2020 Virtual Lean Coaching Summit is right around the corner. So if you would like to see the full agenda, please visit leancoachingsummit.com forward slash virtual. So now let me introduce today's presenter, Suzanne Van Eggman. Dan worked her full 21 plus years career for Philips in product development. She has had the opportunity to spend about one third of that career to explore methods for lean product development and got to be an expert on this area. Now back to operational R&D as project manager, Suzanne applies the lean product development methods she has been coaching. She combines that with her own advisory company, Nabla Lean Product Development, and a role as board member of the Lean Product and Process Development Exchange. With that, I'll hand it over to Suzanne. Good. Hello, or good afternoon, good evening, or wherever you are. Um, so today, I will I would like to talk with you about bringing structure to product development with uh, with the flashy title "More Creative, More Fast." Um, so, uh, Skyly already um, already introduced me. Uh, so maybe to add, I have a background in applied physics at the University of Eindhoven. I worked for 22 years in Philips almost. Uh, I had a lot of product development type of roles. And at the moment I work for coffee product development, uh, working on espresso machines and also uh, um, uh, pots, coffee pot machines. Then I uh, work. I work at uh, for the Lean Product and Process Development Exchange. I'm a board member. This is my last year of my second term uh, as board member. I did a website uh, in the maintenance of that, and I chaired two conferences: one in Paris and the other one in Malmo in Sweden. Um, our new tagline is the science of improving innovation. I liked it a lot because it's. It suggests that you are studying and that you are finding new ways continuously. Uh, unfortunately, we are, of course, uh, limited at the moment with, uh, with the coronavirus to, uh, to organize face-to-face uh, -face conferences. Instead, we do do this type of webinars, but also we try to offer uh, online, um, online uh, conferences um, instead as a kind of a addition and add, add on to uh, to the face-to-face -face conference that we will start next year again uh, also skyler mentioned i have my little company it's called nabla it's uh, the operator symbol uh, that you see here also in the in the blue uh, and that's a little coaching company that came because i i was working in an operational role project manager and i missed also a little bit the coaching so i thought okay let's make a little company so that I can still continue coaching on the product development. I live in, the Dra in Drachten, which is in the north of the Netherlands. You see a picture which is pretty close to my house. So it's a very nice area. So if you ever visit Europe, you have to come here. I have got a family. I've got two kids of 12 and 14. So let's dive into the topic of structure. Let me see whether I can make this a little bit smaller. Oh, here, I think. Yes. Cool. Ah. No. Here. Okay, great. So uh, when you talk about structure, then you could have imagined maybe an axis from all the way left to all the way right or the other way around and where you could maybe at one end Imagine there is no structure at all. It's very fluid and loose. And at the all, all opposite side, it's very rigid and, uh, and constrained. And uh, then the question, of course, is 
Then the question is, what happens? So when you have too little structure in product development, then what you typically see is that there is a lack of direction. So people are trying to figure out where they need to go. It looks a little bit like maybe a, Br a Brownian movement. If you uh, remember the physics classes, then uh, that is the way how electrons move in an electric field. So they move basically everywhere, but they do sometimes move in a certain direction when the field uh, is directing them there. Uh, also what you see in a, in a environment with uh, too little structure is that there is a lack of focus. So people do not focus to get something done. They seem to work one day on some, one thing and one day on another thing. They do not cooperate very well, the type of, uh, of uh, um, things you see in such, a, such an environment. On the other hand, when there is too much structure, what you can see is that teams do not feel uh, autonomous in choosing what is the best direction. So in product development, it's important that there is some autonomy because the people that are close to, uh, to the work are also most of the time best, uh, have the best visibility on what needs to be the next step or what is the way to apply the, the, the techniques to, uh, to get the best results. So they need some autonomy. So if there's too much structure, the, the team is too much constrained. And what you then see, and get is the team is following the rules, but misses the game. So they can see, uh, in other words, they can see the trees, but not the forest or something like that. Eh? So they, they are a little bit um, too much focusing on all the details that, uh, that constrain them. So the question of today is what is then the right level of structure? But let's first start about why does a product development team need structure? So the first thing is that it provides direction. And then in product development, I have this lady here that's drinking coffee because of my coffee role at the moment. Uh, that is our customer. So, the, so the, what matters most is that we understand what she needs from a coffee machine and what she wants and what is her desires. And if we understand that very well, then we can also come up with the right creativity and inventions to, to, uh, to serve her needs. And then uh, we also need to focus the team. So the, the, there needs to be a focus uh, the structure creates the focus uh, of the team to focus and to also like uh, follow a straight path to where they need to be. Then the third point is that it provides a time limit. So if there is a structure, then someone apparently is waiting for the result or actually that is something that the structure does. And also the last uh, point uh, with the nice uh, flower, it enables also appreciation of progress. So what I will do so I will talk about each of the four in a little bit more detail. So I have still this thing in, in my here. Cool. Um, so let's talk first about this customer. So in, in Philips, we like to talk about consumer uh, as opposed to customer. Consumer is the one drinking our coffee. Customer is the one selling our coffee machine. So in our case, we would look for consumer understanding. And if we want to be creative as a, as a developer or as an engineer, we need to understand what the problem is. And the problem, a product development problem is often a consumer or customer need that is not fulfilled. So what we need is true understanding of those customer needs. And we need to understand not only, hey, the problem is that her milk foam layer is not uh, stiff enough. Now we need to understand more about it. So what is then the exact problem with that? Is it difficult for her to create it with her current machine? Uh, does she get too rigid or too loose? Or is it not stable enough? Or what is the problem that is behind? And then when we've got the technology push type of development, which is as good as customer pull, then the uh, direction helps us to identifying the customer need, to identify the customer need that is addressed by the technology that I, that I stumbled upon. When there is customer pool, then it helps me to identify a technology that might serve the customer needs. 
Uh, then the team focus. So the structure also helps to create a team focus. So um, the focus helps to for the, helps the team to perform. So when and and you can also see that from your own from your own job. I, I assume that if you have a nice um, planning for the day with a nice action list. So what is it? What you are going to do? And there is no meetings. What are the things that you would like to get done? You get done more. So if you have organized your week, you get more more out of your week than when you just stumble from one meeting in the other and do some emails here and there. Uh, and that is also, of course, valid for a team. And the other thing on team focus is that when that they find themselves each other better, when they have a, have got a commonly understood goal. So when the team together has a vision on where they need to go, and they also understand who does what in that process, then they can find each other when it's needed. Even in this type of Corona times, where a lot of uh, teams might let's say work from home. They can they can find each other. A colleague of mine uh, showed me uh, this type of behavior, and said then just sends me a little thing. Hey, can we can we have a, have a small chat? And because we have the structure, it's easy to set up the chat and to be done with it also very fast. Then structure makes it time bound. Um, so time constraints are a funny thing. Uh, at one end, they fuel speed, of course. So if there is someone waiting for the results, people go faster. So you know that. Yeah? So I went for a walk just before the webinar. It's evening here. And then I, I noticed I walked faster because I knew I had to be back here in time. And that is something that you do not do like deliberately. It's something that, that is, let's say, automatically when you know someone is waiting. Milestones help to integrate the work. Integration of work is really important in structure, so it helps to figure out what are all the bits and pieces and put them together to see whether the puzzle fits or how the puzzle might fit. Uh, on the other hand, there's also a place of caution on this time bound because a lot of engineers, and most that I know at least, they shut up when a time constraint is not realistic. So if there is a uh, a great idea and the business leader starts chit chatting about he would like to have it in half a year where a normal development time might be one and a half or so then engineers think yeah let it go so then it doesn't work so the time constraint needs to be realistic in a way then uh, another point that you, uh, you might find maybe a little bit different, but I came to realize that uh, after a while is that this appreciation is also a very important part of the structure. So uh, when you are leading a, a task or when you are leading leaders of tasks, then a structure provides you with logical moments to see the progress of, uh, of a certain, uh, certain team. And those moments are also a logical place for to provide the feedback and to give appreciation to the team. And because you give that appreciation in a in a uh, in a uh, frequent way, the team will be motivated to do even better in the next cycle. Okay, so uh, those are the four whys. You why would you like to have a structure? Then let's talk about the methods to provide structure. So let's, let's, let's talk about how do we then apply structure in product development. So you, you certainly know a few ways to apply structure and probably you have tried um, many of them and you have them in your own company or maybe you even coach on this type of thing. So a very common structure in product development is of course the state gate model. Also what gets more and more common is the agile model or things like the skill that your framework. Uh, you also have companies that work with rapid learning cycles or lean scheduling. Uh, what is older but still working a lot is action trackers. They are visual or sometimes even not. Or Kanban, uh, problem Kanbans or that type of thing. So I know, I'm sure you know many more. And the question that I, that I reflect on is, does it actually really matter how this structure is provided? So I came to that when I was leading two different efforts. And I noticed that 
uh, that I, I did apply structure, of course, uh, to, for the team to work. But if someone else creates another structure along similar lines, but not the same, and that works too. So does it really matter? That is the question. So, and what I came to is depending on its execution, all methods can end up anywhere almost on the scale. So, for example, when you look at action tracker, so simple lists of things that need to be done, you have like managers that use them in a very rigid and rigid and constrained way. So you 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 have to put uh, all the concerns, causes, countermeasures in there, due dates every time the whole list is checked for all the progress. The progress is monitored very closely. Uh, you have to write one sentence, blah, blah. So there's a lot of things that you could apply very rigidly. On the, all, the other end, it can also be applied very loosely. So it's a little list on an email with the notes of the meeting and it's never looked at again. Stage gate. Similar, you, you have got companies where the stage gate model is very rich. It has, it has templates with mandatory contents and formats in there and all kinds of other things that makes it very constrained. And people actually in those type of processes uh, tend to really see, see the rules, but not the game anymore. Eh? So they really tend to focus on their own deliverables and forget to look at the whole and the decisions that need to make made at the gate. Whereas it could also be very loose. So there is also companies that have a very loosely defined stage gate process. Question is, is it really le less good or not? So what is, a, what is an optimal stage gate? Then agile is a very interesting animal. A lot of people claim that they work agile, um, but it could be as well as very loose and fluid. So uh, be, yeah, because it's agile, of course, fluid and agile uh, look like each other as words. Uh, it could also be that they apply it very rigidly and constrained. So for example, if you are in a full flash version of a scaled agile framework, you, you tend to end up sometimes in discussions about semantics and other things that makes it, makes, makes it also non-value add. Rapid learning cycles do not have so, you can of course make it rigid, but it's, they will not go to the far end of the scale, but they can again go at the, at the very left end of the scale. Lean scheduling also a little bit in the middle, but you can also apply it very rigidly. So what is my conclusion? The type of structure does maybe not matter so much, but you have to get the balance right. And let's talk about that. What is the balance that we, uh, that we need to, to strike? So there is a, let me count, eight requirements that I've, that I've got for you that, that help to apply a structure. And you will notice that if you apply, think about how should I structure a certain activity for a team or a certain project or this next phase of the project. If you think about this type of, uh, of requirements, it will help you to uh, to Let's say tweak the structure that you have in mind to also fulfill all the, all the needs. So the first thing your structure should do is provide direction on the goals and what is expected from the team, the deliverables. So it should help the team to understand where it's supposed to go. So it could be a very like loose objective, like we would like to learn how we can improve the milk foam on this coffee. It could also be that we have a very like close goal. I would like you to implement this or that process into, uh, into this department, which is really very focused. Then what we need to do is we need to make the decisions visible and also the knowledge to require to make those decisions. So if there are any, <coughs> I'm sorry, if there are any decisions in the process, so when it's very, open yet still so there's a lot of things not decided yet and of course there's many decisions when you are in the front end if you are more in the realization then the number of decisions tends to be smaller but whenever they are there let's make them visible and let's also list the knowledge that we require in order to make that so that could be a request to change 
So then let's think about what is then the knowledge that we require to make to, to decide whether we will allow for that change or not. When it's uh, it could also be a choice between technologies or other things in the front end. Then the third one is an open door. I think it's divide the work into into pieces that can be handled. So we always try to make smaller pieces of work, rapid learning cycles. That they uh, in there in that in that technique you look into what are the knowledge gaps and you give the knowledge gap to a certain sub team or to a certain individual to to fill and to work to to find the knowledge or to do the experiment to, to create that knowledge. Uh, it could also be when it's more an implementation project or something else that you make logical sub projects so that sub teams or individuals can work on those. Then it's important that you make sure that everyone can see the whole thing, so the whole orange if you want, and also all the pieces. So everyone can also see the interfaces between things, and that helps them then to find each other. I think this criterion is often forgotten. So the project manager has a clear plan, and of course, any project manager making a plan has some kind of structure in mind, but sometimes we forget to talk about it and to show the whole to everyone. Then uh, we make it time bound, so we also put some time limits on there. Sometimes you make it time boxed, eh? so we say, okay, let's learn for three weeks and see how much we can learn in that period, and then let's repeat that cycle. Sometimes we say, okay, I would like you to finish this work package within six weeks or something like that. Then what we also need to do in our structure is to put monitoring in place so that we can observe the progress, we can offer help, but we can also appreciate the progress. So it's important that we are interested in the results because when someone is waiting for the results, people will go faster. Then what we also always need to do is change course if needed, and we need to do that based on integration. So we need to see the whole, connect all the dots, and then see how do we need to change course. And could mean that we need to put in place another structure or slightly adapted structure. And then the last point, very important, is make your structure known. So make it visible for people. What is the way? How is what is the way you, you organize your project? It should be clear for the team so that they can see everything and they can work with it, but it also needs to be clear for the stakeholders. When can they expect certain decisions and so on? Okay, so that brings me already to the end. Uh, we are nicely in time, I think. Uh, so uh, what we talked about is that product development requires some level of structure to enable creativity and speed. Creativity comes from understanding where the problem is. Speed comes from making sure that there is bite-sized pieces and people wait for results. There are many ways to apply structure. One method is not necessarily better than the other, so it doesn't make sense. Of course, it's very nice to go to conferences and chit-chat about whether one method is better than the other, but it might be that in your case, that method is better, in another case, something else is better. It's important that, the, that you make known what is the chosen structure and that you learn and adapt the structure to the project needs in the state the project is in. So it might very well be your every learning cycles work very well for you in the front end of the phase, but when you, when you had to move to system level, it didn't work for you anymore and you needed to adapt the structure. That's perfectly normal. It doesn't mean that suddenly your structure is not working anymore. It just means your project needs something else. So that was uh, actually my uh, talk. Uh, I would welcome questions. I realize I didn't put my email address in the presentation. Uh, maybe I give it to Skyler and he, she can make it known uh, somewhere. Um, and, uh, I hope I will meet you uh, at one of the LPPDE uh, conferences or webinars in the future. Thanks, Suzanne. As mentioned earlier, you will receive an email shortly with a link to the recording. Please share this with those who you might find this information useful. Don't forget to check out the information about the 2020 Virtual Lean Coaching Summit. Again, you can see the full agenda at leancoachingsummit.com forward slash virtual. Thanks again, Suzanne, and thanks to everyone who participated in today's webinar. Have a great day.
拜拜。